Taking care of your vehicle's air conditioning system used to be easy. Up until 1993-94, all cars in the United States had R12 refrigerant. And you need a set of manifold gauges with the low side and the high side. And you just put this on the adapter on the car, plugged it in, turned the AC on. Either the gauges moved or they didn't, if they, you had something to do either way. Uh, the trouble with these old gauges is the O-rings. These things are at least 30 years old. The O-rings inside go bad, and they leak. Now, R1, R12 was outlawed to be used only by professionals or people licensed with an EPA Section 609 license or certification. It's a test you take. You can take it online. It takes you about an hour. You can't buy R12 unless you have the license, and you're not supposed to use it unless you have the license. What replaced R12 was R134A. This is a set of 134A gauges. They have quick connects, just like an air compressor. There's O-rings in there too, and there's O-rings on here. And there's O-rings through there. There's too much, this is a Frankenstein set, because my other one like this, my O-rings went bad. So I had another set of gauges with this side kind of cut off, same thing. Now you notice the high side is big and the low side small. So you can't use these on the old R12 and you can't mismatch which one goes where. And by the way, the R12 gauges or hoses, you can switch them if you really weren't paying attention. Anyway, there's a cutoff within 12 inches of the end of the hose. So you minimize refrigerant loss of the atmosphere or venting and the gauge shows you something. I replace this with a digital version. Same thing, same connections, just it has new O-rings and it shows a digital readout. Now, when you put this on a vehicle, you leave the valves closed. That gives you a pressure reading of the static system. If it's zero, there's nothing in the system. If it's above zero, start it up, turn the AC on. If the compressor does not kick on or turn on because it has a low pressure switch, you need to add refrigerant. So by adding refrigerant, you open the low side valve. You just heard it go through because I actually have refrigerant in there. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, you don't open the high side with the vehicle running because that is high pressure and it'll push refrigerant out of the system. Low side is the suction side of the compressor on the car. It will suck it in. When it starts working, there's numbers you want to get to. I got this chart off of www.recharge.com slash how to slash AC system pressure chart. And today it's 75 degrees out. So if we had this on a car, we would want 35 to 50 to 40 PSI on the low side, the blue side, or right here on the gauge. And the high side would be 150 to 170. When you get that, you should have 40 degree air at the vent, the center vent on low fan inside the car. If you don't, there's probably something wrong. Now, you can overcharge on our 134A system. You can overcharge any system, but 134A is really easy to overcharge. That's why on every single vehicle since 1994, or actually since the late 70s, there's a sticker somewhere under the hood that says how many ounces or kilograms, depends where the car came from, the AC system is supposed to hold of what type of refrigerant. I still have R12 set up because I have about 10 pounds of R12 left. I only have two vehicles that could go in, but because that stuff is around $60 a pound now, I switched them both over to 134A. I, and you can buy 134A at Walmart for about five or six dollars a pound.
Now they are phasing that out. By 2030, it will be gone. So buy some while you can. The new stuff, R1234YF, there's nothing out to service it from the average person yet. Anyway, just a quick overview of how to use a manifold gauge. All you want to do is check the pressure, hook it up. Don't open the valves, turn it on, see what you get. If the compressor doesn't come on, but you got some pressure in there, add a little bit of refrigerant. And it should start going. And if you have to add, obviously you have a leak somewhere. If the vehicle is 25 years old, it's normal for it to be low. But if you turn the vehicle off and you hear something leaking out, find the vehicle, find the leak, and you have to replace that part or tighten that fitting or the O-ring or whatever.